I didn't have the end in mind when I started out down this journey. I wanted to create something that hadn't been done before. I wanted to create something I was proud of. As someone who's got back pain and has you know, beat the hell out of my body over the years, uh, wearing traditional leather cowboy boots, it was painful to say the least. And so there seemed to be that there were handmade boots and then there were machine made overseas boots. And those are the ones that were more comfortable. The handmade ones had a higher level of craft, but they weren't as enjoyable to wear. And so how could I bring these together? The idea was how do I make this boot comfortable? I set out to just explore, could we merge these two ideas of something that's still built traditionally still built to be durable and to last and to be used, but also comfortable enough to wear all day and that you don't get to the end of the day and you just can't wait to get your boots off. When I was getting started, I was looking for help. I was looking for advice. I was looking for an education on someone who would teach me what I had been exploring on my own, but give me, the, you know, level me up, almost like a mentor. Where I found that was down in the hill country of Mexico. They were willing to bring me in, have me in the shop, work with me on the engineering, on the designing, on the building, train me up, and then push the limits of what had been done before and, and the norms and the expectations. There's a deep sense of loyalty I have to the people that helped me when I was nobody, and I'm not gonna turn away from that. Uh, what kind of person would I be if I did? And so this, this partnership that we have is, feels very natural and it's something we're very proud of. And to be frank, the best boot makers in the world are in Mexico. Why would we settle for anything less? This is the same workshop that we work with today and we will always work with. So I went and was down in Mexico for months learning the process, and taking kind of my academic knowledge and applying it, getting my hands dirty. Uh, asking questions, challenging how different things are made. And along the process, I did start cutting open other boots to see how they were being made. And one of the things I discovered is that the mass-produced boots have moved to efficiencies and they have moved to cutting out craft. They've also moved to cutting down costs, which means they cut down the quality. They start introducing plastics. They stop using uh, leather heel counters and other pieces. They've moved away from channel welts. Uh, they've even moved away from the quality of the leathers that they're using. You know, you have these huge mass-produced facilities where you've got 400 people on the floor, football fields linked. They're using machines to automate everything. You know, it's called handmade because someone's hand pushed the button on the robot that then made the boot. This is how most boots are made. I mean, not to name names, but you can go down the line. You're like, there's a and there's a and there's a and there's a They're all made in the same place. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the Chisos workshop which is family run and the level of craft and the processes that we follow are proven over the past 120 years. You know, we're not interested in how do we make this faster and cheaper and you know, no one will notice because it's inside. And that, you know, brought me down the ideas of, you know, what types of materials go into the footbed? How do you dissipate impact when you're walking? Um, what leathers you're using, how are they broken in, how are they treated, what's the angle, of the, all those questions. But, but beyond that though, is that not only is there this uh, density of skill, but this is where I was welcomed in with this individual family. And that is that's why I'm there, and that's why we will always be there. Family's the wrong word, but there's a, certainly a sense of teamwork and camaraderie and a shared sense of respect and um, mutual reliance. Like no man's an island. You know, the amount of help that I've gotten is incredible. I've got the first prototypes and I brought people over to my home to see them and the, this excitement over, hey, this idea 
is now manifested in a physical object in front of us. And then building a, a small business around that and being able to bring in customers and people that we don't know who then started buying the boots. We're creating something. It, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild. I think the, the more that you can mix in me being like, oh, fucking <laughs> big corporates are fuck them, like <laughs> the better. Like get that get that little 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 uh, little attitude in there, you know.